Um, I wanted to, we wanted to start by doing uh, acknowledgement of country. We are all spread out throughout Australia and maybe even overseas. So um, just in kind of like, we're trying to do something quite, um, quite broad. So we wanted to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We want to pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. So now that this is done, I wanted to introduce you to Will, who is our product manager at Shiftcare, and today he's got lots of uh, things to present to you, some kind of things that you've never seen on Shiftcare, maybe. So that's going to be quite exciting for you to get a sneak peek at what's coming, and then you get to ask some questions about what's coming up as well, and then Will will have an announcement at the end as well. Um, just in case you don't know me, I'm the head of marketing at Shiftcare. You probably have seen uh, some emails coming from me, maybe some newsletters. And then we are joined also by Rob, who is the latest addition to our marketing team. And you also probably see some emails from Rob too. So yeah, uh, this is us. And I want to hand over to Will that is going to present the webinar today. Thank you so much, Will. Hey, thanks, Cecile. Uh, great to have uh, everyone here. Thanks very much for joining us today. This is the first of our... Um, first of our product webinars and hopefully there'll be more to come as we release things over time and I suppose since I joined this is the first kind of formal engagement um, I've had um, with everybody from a, a product point of view so hoping to um, ramp that up as we uh, as we go forth I joined uh, Shipcare in um, in January so still still finding my feet to some respect um, so Today, I'm hoping to, sh I'm going to go through two of our newest features. Um, one is um, been fully ro rolled out a little while ago. Some of you might have, have had a look at it um, already. Um, and hopefully I can kind of show you some of um, some of the neat things around it that might make your um, lives a little easier. Um, and also um, a, a more recent release that's um, kind of a, the, MV, the, the initial stages are going. So it's, over the next couple of weeks, you'll see um, that evolve a little bit. I'm going to give a sneak peek on an exciting piece of work in progress. Um, I think it's probably the first time we've done something like this. <laughs> I'm showing you, so um, bear bear with me as I show you. It's it's it, um, it's kind of functionally there, but um, it's it's definitely a work in progress. I'll give a quick overview of some of the things that we're working on, and hopefully some of those things um, um, are exciting too, um, and have been frequently requested from us. Um, and then I'm going to give a quick introduction to something we're launching um, that will be kind of the continuation of the engagement that we're doing. Um, that I've been calling the user experience program, but the name may evolve. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to show you is Tableau Views. This was released um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe um, as much as a, a month ago. And so it came about from requests we were getting um, around how can people get a, an overview of kind of the health of the shifts that are going on uh, that they have rostered? Um, we have information in shift care all, all over the place as such. <laughs> um, and is there a way that we can we could kind of consolidate some of that really important information into one view? And so that's kind of where we started with, and that's how tab review um, came about. So I'll give you a quick um, run through of it. So um, hopefully everyone can see the screen that I'm showing you. This is um, our development environment here. Um, and um, we, so it's um, very light on information, but I hope, I hope it's kind of, it's probably a lot less busy than uh, your scheduled screens, but um, it's um, hopefully will be enough to show um, uh, what I'm talking, I'm gonna talk about. So we can see here, that um, this is the, the scheduled view you might be more familiar with, and it's got um, a, a daily view. Um, so Tabular view is up. If you click up here, here into view, you can then switch on Tabular. And it will take us to the Tabular view. So this is the new the Tabular view that we, that we released. And yeah, as I mentioned, this is kind of all about trying to bring some important information, especially the sort of information people were wanting to wanting to monitor, um, all into one one view. Um, so, what do we have here? The 
shifts are in a in a list view now so it's in a chronological list view so you can kind of scroll through as the time goes on um one of the, the big things we were um one of the things that people have been asking for have been around clocking and monitoring whether shifts have had clocking times or not so now we're um, bringing that into the fore on tabular view so you can see uh, which shifts have had clock-ins and the time of those clock-ins and which shifts have had clock outs as well so you can also you'd be able to see if a shift has had a clock in and someone's forgotten to clock out um and you can also see obviously if, if shifts have not had clock in or clock outs at all so you might want to check to see if that um, staff members turned up or um to remind that staff member to clock in and clock out um we then have what i've been calling these these trackers here so the other part that we the, we kind of in this first iteration at least have given three kind of things we were again frequently requested to help monitor so mileage so kilometers on shifts expenses and progress notes and um, progress notes in particular so i can i can show you that um, as well so the trackers allow you to see if you see a tracker like this that is highlighted it means that there's mileage has been added onto that shift so either um, someone in the office or a staff member has added mileage to a shift um, and then again, this the bold highlighted shows if an expense has been added to a shift. Um, and again, on progress notes, again, the bold shows that a note has been added to a shift. So you can see quite visually what information or, or what has been added to a shift and what's not been added to a shift. As you can see down here, the shift has had um, nothing added to it. Um, we wanted to kind of supplement that with um, the allowances because the the mileage and expenses go hand in hand with the allowances that you attach to a shift so we have here um we can we can show you the uh, you can see the mileage themselves that so the allowances themselves in the shift so you can see here mileage has been attached to the shift and you can see that here the mileage and expenses we've also combined that visual in the trackers so you can see here little green dots mean that um mileage has been um that a mileage allowances on the shift and someone's added mileage so that staff member is going to get um, the reimbursement for those kilometers and so you can also see here that um, little green dot is faded as in you've attached mileage but the staff member has not added any mileage to the shift so that way we can it's kind of giving a very easy visual about what the kind of the state of the shifts on any day we can also change this to um weekly or or the fortnightly view but that will just make the the list longer and again still in chronological and date order um one of the features um we found people um found very useful is the filters so we kind of included the the tabular view has allowed us to add a few more um advanced filters to um what you can kind of narrow your 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 view down to so in filters here you can search by um staff teams or clients so we can search here for um this clients so this will show all shifts with um that's been booked against harry i can easily clear that um search and then we can also um um filter down by those trackers that i mentioned before as well as the clock in time and what we've added here is the ability to, to filter on whether it has it or doesn't have it. So for example, you might want to see if um, which shifts have not had a clock in yet. So you can have, you can filter down to not having a clock in. So I can filter down and we can see here, it highlights these shifts. So these ones, um, obviously later in the day, you might not have a clock in, so that, that makes sense. Um, and, we can also filter down by um you might want to be able to see okay what's had mileage added to it and has the mileage expense so you can see which of those shifts where the mileage will um, go to the, the, the support worker so you can see here that these have been um, um correctly allocated um and then we can simply clear the filters you can see the filters at the top you can also very easily switch out of tabular view um, just by going to view again and then going back to um, scheduler so it's been designed so you can switch back and forth rather than it being a permanent view so you can 
tab scheduler for the scheduling point of views. And then you can always switch to tabular when um, you um, want to do some tracking and monitoring to save you having to dive into each shift to see, okay, well, I see the shift here. Does it, has it had a clock in or has it had a note added? Um, because we have on the schedule view kind of limited um, details presented, which has been kind of been done by design so that if you have a whole week, it'd be quite overwhelming if you showed the clock in for everything, the mileage for everything. Um, so the tab review is designed to be able to give you that overview there. So that's that's tab review. Um, hoping people will be, find, uh, will be able to find that uh, useful for their monitoring and checking. Um, and we're actually, uh, if I switch back to the presentation, um, one of the reasons we built it in that tabular sort of um, way and that format is one of the things we are would like to work, work work towards and this is kind of the foundation for it is to be able to do bulk actions on shifts in that in that view so that you might be able to do bulk um, timesheet approvals or or cancel a series of shifts in bulk and that's kind of the, the idea of why we've been we've kind of had it laid out in that way so at the moment, it's more of a view, but it will be able to be an actual actionable table um, in the future. So I'll move on. Unless should I, any questions around um, tabular view? That yes, came up? yes, yes, yes. I was going to say. Uh, so we've had two, I think, two questions that are related to tabular view. The first one is: Is there any way to increase the items shown in the tabular view? Seems to be capped at twenty. Yeah, so that's a, a great question. Um, and I suppose that's part of the evolution of, of it. Um, so the reason we've done that at the moment is um, to help with um, um, the performance of the tablet view, because we're loading quite a lot of information there. And one of the things we're doing as a as a, as a, an engineering team at, at Shift at the moment is helping, is, is working on the performance of our, our, our product. Um, and so as we go through that, um, um, exercise we're going to start being able to remove some of those limits that we've had but it's a great question and something we do definitely want to address awesome thank you the next question that i'm seeing around tabular view is i'm looking at our shift care tabular form but it is not showing the end time question yeah. mark also a great question i saw that on the, on the corner of my eye um so yeah that's um again um something um good good question um, so the way I had it set up there isn't actually the default. Um, <laughs> I have added that column in, which you can do through um, this menu on the right. Um, we're hoping that um, as we improve the performance of this, we can start having more columns that might be able to be added. We've kind of gone with the, the basic columns at the moment, but I imagine your view might look like <laughs> this at the moment without the end time. So you can add the end times. Um, we wanted to have some of the columns configurable so that you could fit it all on one screen because some some um, uh, screens are um, it can look it can be quite um, cluttered and you to like to save scrolling back and forth. So um, a good question. So hopefully that answers um, that one. Okay, I've got one. Uh, will the table of you show if mileage is used? even though the mileage was not allocated to the original shift. Um, so sorry, say, say that again. Will the table view show if mileage is used, even though the mileage was not allocated to the original shift? Yes, so um, and apologies if I, I misunderstand this question. Um, so the the way that table view purely shows it is if um, so as an example with this one, mileage was not included as an allowance, but you can still see if someone's if the start the support worker through the app has added the mileage. It also show is if um, someone in the office has added mileage to the shift themselves. So any mileage to the, to the shift will be shown here, um, regardless of when the mileage was added. And um, it doesn't, it will be agnostic if the mileage is included in allowance or not. So, and that way you can see, so for example, this one, you might, it kind of shows that, okay, 10 kilometers was added to the shift, but there's no mileage. So you might need to add the mileage to the allowance. Awesome. Um, apologies if that didn't 
answer your question there. <laughs> Although otherwise, yeah, I think it says great. I think she said great. Thank you. Um, the I don't know if you're gonna. Uh, yeah, let's let's have a have a try with this one. Otherwise, probably we can. We'll have Andrew to answer those at the end. Uh, when oh, here we go. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. <laughs> Um, when you are approving shifts, the time in the edit section defaults to 2 a.m. Is there any chance it could naturally reflect what the actual shift is? Oh, that's a good point. Um, that's a, that, that would be from product. I haven't heard that before. So that's I'll take that as a piece of feedback um, okay. that we can do, um, that we'll be able to um, put in. One thing that we're going to try and do soon is um, we know that the the time pickers frustrate people. So apologies for that. The, the, when you have to flick through them, we have different time pickers. So um, we're actually going <laughs> to do some work to improve um, those around those time pickers as well. So um, a good piece of feedback, I'll um, take that. Um, okay, this one could be for Andrew and you, I'm not sure. If the kilometers are added by the support worker, but the mileage allowance is not, Will the mileage sync across to invoice? I believe it does, yes. Yeah. Okay, we've got, um, we've got, we've got confirmation. Yeah, right. Yeah, it does. So the allowance is purely for the payroll or the, the timesheet side. But it's also a really good question and something we're looking at at the moment. So mileage, uh, I'll mention later, is a, is a focus of mine at the moment, um, or travel in general as an improvement. And I know that. Um, so some of the feedback we've had is that there isn't if, if you can't if the support worker adds mileage it's kind of you have to manually catch that if the if the if the um the client um, the participant isn't meant to have mileage uh, against um charged to them so that's something we're going to work on to try and improve awesome i feel like the others might not be related directly to table abuse and we might leave them for the end uh, sure. unless andrew there is something that you want to address straight away no, so last okay. two, yeah, the GPS tracking map. We do have a, a tracking map, but we'll take that offline because it's not uh, relevant okay. to the... Yeah, tab it. So we'll yeah. just continue the, the the webinar talking about the different points and then in the end we can cover them all. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Let me just switch back to here. Okay, so the, the other thing um, that I'm sure, well, some of you uh, BDI people might have seen if you've gone into settings, um, but um, it's a little bit more hidden. So something I was keen to introduce today because it's something that we've been um, asked about quite a lot. Um, so that's the customized customized headings for notes. So um, the we've had lots of feedback that people quite like on the progress notes side being able to have headings that then go into and that the, can kind of guide um, support workers uh, and staff on how to fill out the progress notes. Um, and wanting that across um, the incident report in particular, but also like the feedback report, um, feedback notes that you can do through mobile. Um, and also um, a, pet, a pet peeve of mine when I joined was the um, the editor, the, the kind of how you can manage those headings um, wasn't very intuitive at the time. So we, we've done some improvements on that. So let me show you that. So in you go to settings, um, if you have settings, um, access to your role. Um, we now you can see headings. Um, we have this section for headings here. Um, it used to be in the notes, and it used to just be progress notes. Um, so now we can um, manage these headings much better. So if you click into manage for progress notes, you can see you can now manage these. So I can delete um, sample heading, um, and then I could add a heading. But let's say. Um, I wanted that webinar heading I just added to be the first one before there wasn't actually a way of doing that. You kind of had to re um, delete more and re-add them. Um, but now I can um, simply move um, webinar heading to the top. We also have this um, have this option to make headings mandatory or um, optional. Um, so that's to do with once the um, support worker uh, or staff members looking at um, filling out the notes. Um, if you make, say, webinar heading optional, it doesn't actually, it doesn't need to, um, it doesn't need to um, be, um, 
they don't need to fill out that heading. Um, I've just noticed that one is, yeah. so I'm in the development environment, so <laughs> bear me, with me on this one, it might be that the mandatory headings, okay. Ah, there we go. So I can make them more mandatory by the edit, sorry. That was uh, <laughs> across. Um, so yeah, so the um, so you can click them to make them more mandatory so that they have to fill them out, submit a progress note. It could be that if you want to make one of the headings, say demonstration heading uh, optional because it might not always be relevant to them, you could then make that um, an optional heading. And then soon we're gonna be rolling out that across feedback, incident and, and inquiry. Um, we're just finishing off that piece and allowing those headings to be um, usable in the in the um, the web version as well. So through the dashboard, um, when you're writing notes, you can have you would also be able to see the feedback and instant headings that you added. So that's that's that feature um, for the um, editing the, the notes. So I'm just looking to the screen. Um, the final. The, so yeah, so what? So yeah, we've been that. So currently, you can rearrange progress notes and you can make them um, mandatory or optional. And we're working on expanding that across the feedback instance and inquiries. Okay, so um, final thing I'm going to show you. <laughs> you might have seen it when I flicked um, between the scheduler, the normal scheduler view, and the um, job board. Uh, not job board. I'm going to present job board and the um, tablet view. Um, but we're working on something we're calling job board. Um, and other areas might call it kind of open shifts. Um, and this is very much a work in progress. This is why I'm in um, this development environment rather than um, our normal environment. So this is where we, we kind of can test things out. So if I, um, you'll see here for job board, we now have this new um, column called, or row called job board. And this is um, to do with allowing you to be able to, if say um, you have uh, this shift for Zainab that is um, Henry can no longer attend, we'll now be able to add that to the job board. And that means that your staff members will be notified that there's a shift that is open for them to take. Um, you can configure whether or not you do a first come first serve or you require approval for them to take it using um, this button here. So auto assign. So if someone says, yep, I can do that shift and they, they um, agree to take it, then it's just assigned to them automatically. Or you can have it so that it builds up um, people who have applied to it and you can choose out of those applicants who to assign it to if you want a bit more control over that. Um, you can um, configure if you if the job should only be seen to certain teams. Um, so say that it, um, it you want if, if your um, if the client has a team assigned to them and you only want someone within that team to be able to take that shift, you can assign it to a team. Um, you can also, in advanced um, edit, you can um, add a few more criteria um, to that. So we've trying to we've picked some from the um, the, the st staff profile that you can assign. So it can narrow down who you go to. It could be that maybe the participant um, um, maybe English is an FS language, and, and you want to have a, a language criteria around that. Um, there's also compliance competencies and KPI documents um, that they might they might need and have um, ticked off, such as maybe they need first aid or um, certain um, competencies around um, a medication or, or procedure. You can also set distance from the shift, so that's the um, staff member's um, home address um, compared to um, the shift's address or the, the participant's address. Um, so you can set a, a, a radius through which to do that because obviously if someone lives 100 kilometers away then they might not be uh, appropriate so you don't want to um, flood their inbox with those shifts so that's how job board um so this is uh, an evolving um, um feature that we're as you can see we're, we're almost there um so you can also just create a, a job so if i add um, a shift to um say harry for uh, the 19th of day, it is the 19th of day. Um, I can then 
pin it to job board um, and you'll be able to track it criteria you can see the the the, the, um, the job is here on the job board and you can drag and drop that if you like so say you know um uh, that's all here is um as you've spoken to me you can take the job you can then just drag it to them if you need so that's that's job board as you can see it's <laughs> the visuals and the um the display probably needs some work but um, we're nearly there and we're um, currently working on the mobile side of this to kind of make that all um integrate together um so yeah that's that's um job board and sorry i, I realized on the headings i skipped past any q a on headings but maybe a good point to stop for any questions Andrew, are you going to? Yeah, uh, just back to the um, the shifts and the shift notes. Um, Failing yes. just mentioned one of the bugbears they see that if the notes, uh, when the notes are added at the date of writing rather than the date of the incident or the shift. So most of the times mm -hmm. um, they're one in the same, but when the notes are added uh, a day or two after, uh, it doesn't actually associate it back to that original shift time. So they just wanted to know if there's a way that they could possibly differentiate between the two and record them chronologically. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I think so. I, and it's a really good question. And in fact, I had a meeting with our developers and um, our designers yesterday on this exact one of these exact points. So we're working on the communications page for clients and staff. Um, and one of the things we're looking to do with that is be able to um, configure so or be able to group um, notes together um, if they're related to a single shift, but also be able to like to be able to sort your um, view relative to the um, date the note has been created versus the date that it's referencing. So either it's shift or, or if you add a reference to date to it um, um, on that. So um, we're, we're, we're working towards being able to make that happen through that communication page, if that's the page that is being referred to. Cool. Uh, Faelene said that will be great. Thank you. Good, uh, good stuff. Um, someone's asked, uh, with regard to Teams, is there a way to add non-approved staff? Uh, for example, a client states they don't want to work with X person for whatever reason, mm -hmm. so it flags that they can't work with that client. Yeah, that's a great question as well. A few people have um mentioned that to me previously so that is on our roadmap to look at um um haven't started work on that um at the moment but it is something that is on our radar uh, kind of having like a negative like a, a negative team as such <laughs> in terms of the reverse a reverse team yeah that's um that's something on our radar as well cool and uh, kate just wants to know if job board is going to be available for pro and premium only or if it's available on basic or do we know? Yet? I, I haven't. Uh, yeah, we haven't really um, decided exactly where that will go at the moment. Um, still um, working through through on that. Cool. That's all the questions. Great. Done. Cool. There's a few. Um, thanks to those that answer, asked some questions um, that were a little bit off off topic. We'll get back to you. Uh, either with a phone call or via email. I know Bojin asked a, a couple of questions there, so I'll get in contact with you um around that uh, does anyone else have any questions before we wrap up uh, there's some coming through on the chat um, yeah there was i was going to say there's one from, from us on the chat andrew if mm. you want to have a look at that i just read that one of the, the two there yeah again good questions that actually i think andrew and i spoke about that last week <laughs> um that is that point so yeah you're right at the moment um so we have like mandatory to be able to complete the note, but not mandatory on the shift. Um, so having a progress note, it's mandatory to clock out or finish the shift. Um, so um, I agree, that's that's a bit of a gap at the moment, but that, that is on our radar. We had a, a chat about that last week, in fact. So. Oh, there is a very nice compliment. I think just want to thank the shift care team. As a new business, we have found service very prompt and innovative and open solution for improvement. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, we've got two love the job board idea, Will. So, yeah, great. Yeah, hopefully, we'll try and get that as soon as we can. Thank um, you. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. And then, so what else are we working on at the moment? So, um, we're working on um, the concept of 
I have used maybe the our internal way of describing here, but we call it private notes. So, and that's just a way of what we're going to hopefully be releasing quite soon is um, if you're on the um, if you're an office um, worker, so um, you have admin or um, one of the roles that give you access to the, the web version of Shiftgear, you'll be able to write notes um, on shifts and on clients and on, on staff uh, profiles or communication pages um, that will never be visible by the mobile. So we're kind of calling them private notes. It will be a first iteration, so it will just be that will be the, the full scope, but you'll be able to kind of say, write in this note, I don't want um, um, my support support workers seeing this on the mobile, you can put on the tag and then they will then no one will be able to see it. Um, I know I, I, I feel some of the feedback on that already might be around configuring that to roles. Um, so the first iteration won't have a kind of a role based filter on that at the time, um, but I'm aware that that might be a requirement. Um, and we'll also be looking so that um, a um, support worker for, um, so I on the mobile will be able to write a note and say, okay, I'm writing a note, but I only want office workers to see this and not any of my colleagues through the, um, that also have access to the mobile. So that's mainly around the feedback and the incidents um, that we've had feedback around that. So we're working on that at the moment. Um, one of the, probably the next things that will be coming out is being able to have pay group flexibility um, at the shift level. So at the moment, many of you know, will have, if you have a staff member, the pay group is kind of fixed at their profile. So effectively, it's very tricky <laughs> in Shifter to be able to have um, a staff member who might um, fall into two pay groups. Um, they might do some um, piece, some work under one pay group and, and, and work under another pay group. And now you'll be able to actually assign that at the shift level. So you'll have a default. So Major, so from, probably for majority of the shifts that you book, you'll be able, they'll have like a default pay group that will be set at the profile, but you'll be able to change that if you need to in the advanced settings. Um, one of the things I alluded to earlier was around how we handle travel. Um, so that's something I'm investigating at the moment. Um, we've got a huge um, base of um, feedback around that that comes through um, the um, support team. Um, so I should say thank you for everybody who puts feedback through to the support team that does come to me and I, I do read all of it, as well as the MPS scores. Again, thanks to everybody who um, filled out the MPS score, really appreciate it. And left comments, I, I read all of those as well, and travel and, and how we handle mileage came up. So we're trying to think through think things through on that and how we're going to progress with that and improve that. And another um, big thing we're body of work we're doing at the moment is improving the stability and performance of our product. Um, so not as visible, but hopefully they're very important. Nonetheless, we did a recent upgrade you might have seen um, last week. Um, and that, that's, that's one of those. That was a, a major one. It won't be so <laughs> um, um, big each time we do uh, a, um, a release to it for those improvements, but um, it's kind of a program of work we're going through. Um, and that will allow us to do things like potentially making the, the tablet view go to more than 20, for example. So we can actually start um, giving more data at any one time. Um, so um, that's it in terms of features. I'll just finish, but still I'll be open for questions if anybody has them um, on what I just spoke about around the user experience program. Um, so you might have seen it in the newsletter that came out recently. Um, but we're trying to launch um, um, a program where we have people who are interested in testing prototypes um, and trialing new features with us. You know, our, our belief is that we're building this kind of together with all our, our customers and our products. And we're, you know, it's all around trying to solve the needs and challenges you face. Um, and we need, and we want you along that journey with us um, from as early as we can. So we build the right things um, and not, um, not the wrong things or in ways that aren't very useful. Um, so and we're trying to improve how we do that. Um, so one of the things that we've, um, we're going to launch is this user experience program where we can reach out to you and say, we're trying, we've got a prototype of this new thing. We'd love to know how you, um, how you find it, what's your feedback um, going. So one of the things I would like to do um, is around the job board, in fact, so um, speak one-on-one -on -one with me around kind of your, your feedback and how it works. Um, so that's something um, we'll be sending some more information out at, at the end, off the back of this web, webinar to you all. 
um, which you'll be able to sign up to. Um, there'll be no obligations. It's not like if you sign up, you have to do anything. It will just be um, saying, I'm open to receiving um, a message um, every once in a while to say, <laughs> I'm keen to, um, um, are you are you interested in, in doing a trial? And you can say yes, no, there's no obligations. You can sign up and never do any of them. So <laughs> it's just, it will be up to you. Um, I, I love the fact, Will, that we've got Chris today saying user experience program is the one we have been longing for. It would be great for new users to get familiar with software without making mistakes. So yeah, great, great feedback. Awesome. That's great. Good to hear. So hopefully <laughs> see some people signing up after on, on the back of the email that yes. come from the back of this. Exactly. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all I have. I know the Someone email said 30 minutes, so apologies for that. <laughs> so, so, well, just one person is kind of saying, depending on how much time it takes, do you have an idea of, of how much time it would take yeah. to be part of the, the Power User Program? Yeah, sure. So, um, again, you, you can sign up, you can be involved in as many sessions as you, as you like. Um, but the way I normally would run these, it would be 45 minutes to an hour of just of you kind of running through the prototype and then just giving your feedback and, and that would that would be it. Um, so that would be all the time. And then maybe just, there might be some follow-up questions, but um, normally we can cover everything in 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and it would, yeah, you can do as many as you like. It, it won't be every week. I'm, I'm thinking maybe once a month, once a month it would be. Um, offered you don't and again you don't have to do that you can choose to do one a year or, or whatever it is awesome well i think it was great to have you will talking to everyone today very exciting no, to yeah. have you on board i think andrew appreciates of uh, having a bit of a support to do this webinar <laughs> see him anymore save the voice look um there are a few questions outstanding we'll uh they're a little bit off topic so we'll, we will answer those outside of uh of the webinar so we'll get back to you uh, on those. So thanks for uh, sending your questions through. They've been very helpful. And... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the great feedback, you know, good and bad. We appreciate it all. And thank you so much for attending. We will be sending, as Will said, the recording, the link to be registering for the, the new user program, and then uh, a few kind of recap of what we covered today. Yeah. And I should add for the feedback wise. So I know um, people use the the chat function we have with our support team and and with features and requests and feedback. Um, they do, and if when our our team says, "Oh, we'll we'll send them to the product and the team to look at," we do we do read them all. Apologies, I I, I can't get back to um, everybody when we we have those, but just be assured that they do get read, <laughs> and um, we do we do take all that on board. Um, it's it, it's a yes. lot for just one person, will so yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that people can understand, <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Yeah, um, thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be back soon next month, hopefully, with a new webinar that we will be working on, um, you know, in the background. Thank you so much, and we'll chat to you very soon. Thanks, Have a Will. great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so Bye. much, Will.